And this will be a quick introduction of how to use FreeCAD, especially if we're getting started. This is particularly suited for Revit users or Rhino users or SketchUp users where you kind of know your way around those programs and you're curious how to get started in FreeCAD. So when you download and open FreeCAD, this is the default view that you get to see. So let's click on Create New and we just created the new document. In here where it says Start, we have a drop down menu. Those are the different workbenches in FreeCAD. The way the program is organized is in separate workbenches with separate scopes. The program is so big that they had to break it down into different workbenches. It's actually very similar in the way the Katia works. Now you see here I have a BIM workbench. You may not have that because it comes as an add-on. To install it, if we go to View, or rather Tools, Add-on Manager, we get a little pop-up. And here we, see we have BIM. So if you click Install Update, close, it will ask you to restart FreeCAD, and then when you start it again, you should be able to see BIM. Now if I click on BIM, we get the BIM Workbench open and a little introductory window. I'm, I'm going to ignore that for now, just walk you through the interface a little bit. So that's what the window looks like. So the first thing we need to do is slightly organize the different toolbars because some of them are actually squished. So this here, these are the snap tools. I usually like to keep my snap tools on the side. These are management tools, put them somewhere over here. Um, these are work plane settings and general line weight settings and things like that. So that's good to stay where it is. Uh, these are the general BIM and architecture commands like we have floor, building site, space, wall, columns, slabs, etc. These are the drafting commands. These are the annotation commands and also there's a section two in here. And then we have the move, clone and sort of like operational commands. Whoops, let's put these guys here. Okay, that's looking a little bit better and a little bit cleaner. Feel free to adjust them any way you like. So next thing we need to do is just change a couple of settings. If you go to edit and preferences, in general, Depending on which part of the world you're from, you may want to change your settings. So here we have standard millimeters. I like to work in meters. Or if you're based in the US or work in an American project, you probably want to use building US. General. Okay, then you, if you click OK, we should be good to go. So now let's draw a rectangle. Now, by default, I think because FreeCAD has started out as a program for creating small product designs, everything is in millimeters and it's quite zoomed in. So you really typically need to zoom out and here you can see where we're starting to draw. Okay, that's approaching more like a scale that I like. So if I start and put zero, 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 enter point, and now we can either drag and drop, or we can enter the coordinates. Let's put 10, 10, 10. Enter point. So now we have a 10 meter by 10 meter rectangle. Now, if you want to move in 3D space, we can click this gizmo here and click an icon. And if you don't see anything in this view, menu here we can click this button which selects all and we can also change the 3d interaction here down here where it says CAD we have different settings so you can set it to Revit and if you hover over it it tells exactly which button does what you know so the Revit settings are very similar to Revit except they've also added some CAD like functionality which is again a little bit similar to Katia in the sense that you can press and hold both buttons. But in this case, I'll just use the Revit one. So middle button is panning around. Shift plus middle button is zooming around. And you see right now, this is kind of rotating a little bit weird. That's because it's on trackball rotation. 
Trackball rotation is useful for rotating a row axis and being able to twist, and that's what usually product designers use. But we can change that if you go and click on Revit, Settings, Orbit Style, and change it to Turntable. Probably just need to reset this if I go back to top. And now we make sure that the vertical line stays vertical. I guess it's locking the axis. So let's go back to top. So what can we do with this? rectangle now. We can create walls, so walls and all other elements in FreeCAD, they're typically based on sketches. So we always first start with a sketch and then we create an element based on that sketch. So I'll select the rectangles, click this, which is the wall tool, and we get walls created. This here is the project tree and you see now that our sketch kind of became part of the rectangle. That's because in FreeCAD, there are inherent relationships which are displayed in a tree. If one object is based on, a on another object, you can understand cl clearly through the hierarchical tree. That becomes very powerful, but we'll focus that on a different tutorial. Now, if I click on the wall, it gets selected here. And we have all the properties. So we, every object has properties and it can be customized to have additional ones. If I want to change the height to let's say seven meters, if I click here and it changes, except it doesn't update automatically. We get a little blue icon here, which means that we need to refresh the computation. The reason for that being is that the FreeCAD documents, they can get fairly complex. And instead of having to recompute all the time, it only recomputes on demand. This way it keeps the model much easier to manipulate and orient. So if I go now to edit, refresh, and we see the updated height of the wall. Now we can use that same rectangle, if I select it, to create a slab. So now I've created a slab. And if I click on the slab, again, it has some inherent properties. Let's change the height, make it half a meter. And we get this little blue icon again. If I go to edit, refresh or hit F5, now we should adjust. I think in this case, it's going up instead of down. Let's just confirm by seeing where the rectangle is. So if the direction is wrong, with the slab selected, I can adjust the normal to point down. And again, I just need to hit F5 to refresh. And now it should be in the correct way. With the walls, just like we have in Revit, we can change the alignment to be either left or in this case, right. So now both are perfectly aligned. Also, a little bit more customizations. If you go to Edit, Preferences, Display, Turntable, Rather General, you can change the style sheet. I prefer to use dark mode, and you can change the size of the toolbar icons, depending if you're working on a 4K monitor or 1080p monitor. Now, if you want to move components, I'll select both the wall and the slab. Select move. We can move them. We can specify either here or we can start typing. And let's say we want minus 20 meters, zero, zero. And now he has moved those elements there. Now what you'll notice is that the position here is actually changed. So if I move this element again, you see how it has changed. And they're always related to the underlying sketch from which they started from. So a really nice thing in FreeCAD is that all objects, their properties can be linked to other properties. So let's say we want the slab to always move with the wall. If I click on the slab, position, I can change the X by clicking equals, 
and then we select start typing wall and it will automatically come up and then dot placement base x so now if I move my wall along the x-axis you see that the slab follows Good luck trying out FreeCAD and please remember to subscribe to the channel and feel free to ask any questions in the comments or have suggestions for new videos.